come to this place monthly, coming to receive. The church has taught us things about Holy Communion. One of the first things the church has taught us is we're right to confess our sin, to acknowledge this distance that we've allowed, that we honor God's holiness by confessing our unholiness, that we recognize it's not by our merit that we come to this table, but it is pure grace of God that we're invited to be with Him, to dine with Him. And when you dine with someone that that you're part of a partnership now, you have a relationship that is deep and meaningful, you've been trusted with something, you come to this table and dine with God, you've been trusted with something that God wants you to take and use and live for. The church has taught us that we confess our sin and that we are reassured of our forgiveness, of God's mercy, we become confident of it, even with our sinfulness, God is greater than our sin. We're reassured that God gives us His mercy. We're taught by the church to praise God whenever we come. Part of our part of our rubric, part of our worship experience, our liturgy is to praise God. We say similar to what the seraphim saying, "Holy, holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of Your glory." We say this every single time when we come. We've confessed. We've been assured of our part, and then we praise together, "Holy." Holy, holy, for pardon, we commit. That's, that's the, the next step in this whole thing. We commit to go as Isaiah did. Lord, here are we, send us. The way we do it on a monthly basis is, the, is that prayer I pray. And almost every single time I've led you in communion, I prayed this prayer at the end. And you may say, well, it just sounds like something you're reading out of a book. It is, but, but this is why we pray it. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit, that we may give ourselves for others in Jesus' name. Grant that we may go, that we may give. This is that final response. Isaiah came and he saw his sinfulness. He was made right, and then he committed himself to going. We come, we know our sinfulness, we confess it, we're pardoned, we praise, and then we say, Lord, send us, grant that we may go to the world to give ourselves for others. We receive, and we go. We honor God's holiness by offering ourselves. In worship, we have this recognition. That God is other. But in God's mercy, He's drawn us near. We recognize that God's forgiveness is what sets us free, but free in a way that we are compelled to serve. We can't help but serve. We join the seraphim in singing God's praise in Isaiah and offering ourselves. And so I, I know that we come into this place and, and we enter it and we want to give our Sunday best, which is in fact giving our praise. It is coming into a place of praise and offering ourselves, but then we, we respond with our Sunday best. So we don't just leave it here. We go out giving our Sunday best, going where God sends us. God asks, the seraphim with a twinkle in his eye. Whom shall I send? And the answer we're right to give is here we are, Lord. Send us. Let's pray. Lord, we're here. By your mercy, we are here. We're here because we have been drawn by you. You've led us into this place, into this time of, of worship. We've not done it. We aren't the ones to make this possible. We confess to you, Lord, that sometimes we get off course on this thing. Sometimes we get proud of 
ourselves for a little effort, a little attention. Lord, we are in the presence of your awesomeness. You're the God who fills the temple and then some, who, who can't be contained in any one space, who is not global, you're galaxy-wide, you're all of creation, you're about these places that you've made, flinging the stars into the heavens. And yet you know us. You don't just know that we exist, you know us by name. You, you've drawn near to us and by your Spirit you call out to us and you push us in ways to go and do what you've called us to do. You, you've given us assignments and trusted us to be your partners in ministry. Us, Lord, us, you have said, I have worked for you because you matter. Because there's something you can do for me. Lord, forgive us for shrinking away from that. Forgive us for denying it. Forgive us for getting so caught up in our own little desires that we miss out on the importance of such good opportunity for you. We thank you, God, that you are filled with mercy and love. That we can be assured that nothing in this world can separate us from your love. Nothing in the world to come can separate us from your love. We thank you for such mercy and grace. You are holy. Lord, in your mercy we pray for friends of ours. We pray for those who are in need of your care. We pray for Bill Gerard that he will settle into his next place and will be cared for well there. We pray for Steve Brockman that his recovery will go well and he'll soon be strengthened again to serve you. We pray for Judy's cousin that in your mercy she will be found and well and Covered. We pray for Tim's friend, for all the persons who we bring this day before you, needs in their lives, needs in our lives, as we prepare to receive the grace of your Holy Communion. May it meet the needs we bring to you this day. This we pray in the good and strong name of Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. <coughs> As people who have been drawn together by God, who...